Hello my friends and welcome to another watercolor tutorial. We are going abstract once more. So I have my piece of paper in landscape position and we're going to be painting like uh, what I hope is, I'm not even going to say it's an African scene because this is probably going to just end up looking like a field, but it's inspired by ROYC paints. Um, where do we even start? Okay, this is gonna kind of be divided into three sections uh, horizontally. So the first one is going to be the sky, obviously. So I'm gonna take grayish blue and we're gonna just have, and actually we should probably just paint the top third with a wall, like it could just be water, but I have mine tinted because I can't see where I've painted if it's just water. But if you've got an eye, then you don't really have to do that part. Then you can take blue and create clouds. So just streak some of that blue or gray or like very watered down black across just to make some clouds. And it doesn't have to be very specific, sorry, very like detailed. That's what I meant to say. Uh, simply because this is meant to be an abstract painting. You can add like darker ones for contrast by all means, but don't get hung up on the clouds, just yeah, that's good enough, okay. Uh, so next, we technically would want this to dry, but because this is an abstract painting, I'm gonna attempt to do these layers all at once. So this next layer, I want it to be like a very muted yellow green, uh, and you achieve that just by watering it down. So the first part is just very, very light. Um, I'm leaving like a little gap there because I don't want it to bleed into the sky. And I'll just cover that up later with something else. Um, so we've got that. And then I'm going to create kind of like, I'm gonna take another green and paint lines similar to what we did with the clouds. I don't know what these are because I'm looking at this reference. Um, so I can't really, I don't know what these are. I guess we're just adding some green details to differentiate the different layers. Doesn't matter. It's abstract. It can be what you want it to be. <laughs> okay. So that's our middle layer. Our last layer, we're going to have like a little brown pathway, um, so I'm picking up brown and it's going to start here somewhere and it's just going to go that way. So you're just painting a line of brown going diagonally and then take darker green than you used up here. Maybe mix a little black in with it if you're not happy with your green and we're going to paint that like so around our pathway. So I'm intentionally leaving these white gaps for abstract purposes. Uh, I'm taking a little bit of black and I want to add that in with my brown. Um, just to give my pathway a little bit of distinction. And I'm also taking black and adding it to green. And again, the shades don't matter here. It's just like you want darker and lighter versions of what you're working with. And I'm just adding it to the base of my grass here, like so. And I'm gonna do it again up here. So, um, 
this will be basically just a streak all the way across and I want to kind of turn it into shrubbery in some areas and I realize this part is still wet whatever it's fine because it's abstract that is what we're going for so just let your paint bleed and do whatever it wants to do it will result in a, a much more effortless look in the end. Like try to let go of control, which, you know, easier said than done. I have that problem too. I like to con try to control not just paintings, but things in life too. <laughs> let go guys. Let this be your lesson in control. And I added some like black green in the corner and I'm just basically scribbling back and forth with the just tip of my paintbrush to kind of create a grassy effect. And you can do that in multiple places if you wish. Uh, so that's fine, I would say, the way that it is there. Um, I also want to, I should have added like a mountain thing here when this was wet because then it would have bled like this and it would have all made sense, but now it kind of looks like it's a separate thing. I think the key to abstract is going quickly, like not letting yourself think about what you're doing, just giving yourself a time limit and hitting go hitting start. So I took um, like gray mixed with green and you saw how I added it there. This is still wet. Some of the gray is still wet. So it ended up kind of bleeding out anyways, um, which I'm happy with. See, I don't even know what this is, but you look at it and you're like abstract field. This makes sense. But the key thing, and I've said this before in previous abstract paintings, the key thing about abstract paintings, what makes them come together is having one single detailed feature in your painting. So in the reference that I'm looking at, she has, well, she has two. She has a, a tree and an elephant. I typically add fences because they, I, I'm just particular to fences. But in this case, I might just add the tree because um, it looks nice. I have high hopes that I don't ruin my painting with this tree. But I'm going to let this totally dry because we don't want it to bleed everywhere like all of our other features. Okay, so hopefully this is dry. I've taken brown with black and this is a very particular kind of tree. I'm kind of painting it to the left of the center. Uh, this should have been darker, but oh well. So this tree seems to have, kind of looks like broccoli. Where it has all these branches kind of going up. Okay, and then we can add our green to it. And I want to use a dotted motion for this. So that it doesn't look, I still want it to kind of look abstract a little bit. What do you think? I don't know how I feel about this tree. Oh, I should not have made that taller. Because now I have to add more broccoli branches to it. And make it even wider. Okay, 
think I should have stuck with the fence. What do you guys think? Um, I'm going to leave it because it's supposed to be abstract. Okay. And uh, I always say that and then I'm like, no, I'm going to add one more thing. <laughs> Because I see it kind of last minute. I'm dipping my paintbrush, or like I'm mixing some black and green and whatever's on my palette onto my paintbrush. And then I'm going to just flick it on in the corner. Ah. Uh, there. There, that's it. I'm not going to add anything else. You can add birds in the sky if you want to add like another uh, detail to your painting. But... I'm going to stop here if I can peel this paint off, or tape, if I can peel the paint. I used to be able to peel the tape off in one go, and now it just comes off in individual sections. Okay, there we go. Let me know what you guys thought of this one. Hit like, hit, hit subscribe, and I will see you in the next tutorial.